Shai. So over the last couple of months, this seemingly little item has been subject to big conversations and policy discussion in the country. The plastic bag. It's been about two weeks now since the effect of the plastic bags ban in the country. And in this period, some people are yet to understand what all the fuss is all about. And we'll talk about that in a bit. But first, I'm curious to see how you are coping. Hanifa Finn is a businesswoman and a mother of two residing in Nairobi. We are trying to adjust um, packaging of food. You know, in our houses, uh, most of the people in Kenya, uh, as mothers, I would say, I don't know if I'll say most of the people, but I'll say as mothers, there is always a way we store our foods. We love getting the small paper bags. We like call them the nylon bags, the small ones, and then we stuff our food. Because Kenya, again, I'll say economically, we've gone a bit, should I say high? The cost of living has gone high. So it, we budget per week. So as budgeting, that budgeting comes, you have to buy a lot of food for that week. And then you divide for the seven days. So dividing for the seven days uh, means that uh, every day you'll be picking out something to cater for that day. But now it has really affected us. Do you know why we can't get the nylon papers again? Hanifa, who was used to storing her food in plastic bags, has had to make adjustments. Out with the bags, in with the containers. It's not like I bought a lot of them, but at least every day I go to the market, when I meet, when I get some small money, I see I get one of a hundred bob. Like many other Kenyans, Hanifa finds the adjustments costly and inconvenient, but she sees the bigger picture. We should be honest here. The truth is, however much it is hurting us right now, there is something that we'll enjoy later on. Mama Shiro's fresh fruit and vegetable stall is one of the biggest at the Nairobi West shopping center. We arrive just as the day's morning deliveries are being made. Potato sales, which has been among her highest, has since taken a nosedive. She blames the ban. <laughs> Bag ni moja, anataka vitu kama viazi, anataka vitu kama tomatoes, unaona hizi mix zote na cereals pamoja. Ya ime tu affectu tu sana. A few meters from Mama Shiro's stall is this pile. A heap of waste wrapped in various forms and sizes of plastic bags lying just by the roadside of this busy shopping center. You and I both know just how common a sight this is in various parts of the country. Now, Forget about the ISO that such sites are for a second and think about this. Every single bag that we have ever used in Kenya since the 60s still exists today and that is the concern. And that is not even the gravest scenario because plastic bags have only been around for about 50 years so there's no first-hand evidence of their decomposition rate. However, using respirometry tests, which are tests used to estimate rates of metabolism, scientists estimate that plastic bags take up to 1,000 years to break down. Now, that's a really, really long time. You're probably thinking, why is this such a big problem? Are plastic bags really that harmful to us? We started this conversation about banning plastic bags in Kenya over 15 years ago. The reason being that the scientific evidence tells us that these petrochemicals are harmful to the environment. They, we find them in our water bodies. Our livestock are ingesting them. Uh, even our fish are ingesting these uh, plastic pollutants. And eventually they affect uh, our health. And it's because of this concern that we decided to join actually the global movement to phase out 
plastics in our economy. And in Kenya, we've just started very simply by starting with the plastic carrier bags, which are used abundantly by uh, everyone. Dr. Ruth Odhiambo, a lecturer at the Department of Chemistry at the University of Nairobi, says it's crucial for Kenyans to understand and own this cause. It is important that, apart from people not wanting to be on the wrong side of the law, they need to know the impact on their health. When they inhale those toxic gases that are released, it affects the hormonal balance. Some of these gases are carcinogenic. So some people end up contacting or getting cancer due to long exposure to these toxic fumes when plastics are burnt. So I think there is a lot of need for education. A huge global concern is the quantity of plastic waste that end up in the world's oceans, either by being blown by wind, carried by water, or directly disposed into these oceans. In 2010, scientists discovered a giant garbage patch in the Indian Ocean, which is partly made of plastic bags. Early 2017, scientists also discovered a pocket of plastics, human trash, and chemical waste in a newly explored region of the Pacific Ocean. Now, here's a shocker. Though researchers are still determining the garbage patch's size, it is estimated to be four times the size of the United Kingdom or 1.5 times the size of Texas. All this being a heap of waste sitting in the ocean, most of which cannot decompose. Yeah. Again, why is this a concern? Plastics find their way into the ocean when they are carried by winds or when they are carried by water. And it is a big concern because we have some marine life that feed on some particular food like jellyfish. And you see jellyfish, it almost looks like plastic. You know, when you look at the color in water, it looks like plastic. So at times when they, when they think they're eating the jellyfish, they are actually eating the plastic. Now, when they eat the plastic, the plastic chokes the digestive tract. So they think, they think that they are, they are full, they think that they are satisfied, while ideally they just choked with the plastic because it cannot be easily digested. So some of them end up dying from, from starvation. Uh, some of these marine animals also, they get strangled, they get entangled by the plastics. And uh, some of these marine animals, you know, when they eat the plastics, some of these plastics, they, they have the toxic chemicals we were talking about. So they get absorbed into their systems. So in the long run, it also contributes to their death. This is why ocean pollution should concern you. If animals such as turtles and fish don't die from swallowing the trash, their bodies are likely to become more toxic due to the chemicals found in plastics. This, in turn, makes them unsuitable for consumption by humans and other creatures. Further, it's estimated that by 2050, 99% of birds will have plastics in their guts due to the extraordinary amount of goods disposed of by humans. I think it was last year or the other year, I was affected, like, uh, directly. Um, there was a time there was a lot of uh, rain and then it became, uh, the whole place was flooded. Many people, I don't know, but I will talk about my experience here. I live around Timor and uh, the whole place was flooded with water. Reason being, the trenches were all blocked with the plastic bags. And the plastic bags, where are they coming from? From us. All right, so that's a rather grim picture of the kind of harm caused by plastics. Question is, are we all smiling now that plastic carrier bags have been banned in the country? Well, some of the manufacturers in Kenya are not smiling. In fact, they say that there is a dark side to this ban, which is lost in export revenue and foreign exchange due to this ban. The manufacturers say that the ban is untimely and that the National Environmental Management Authority, NEMA, did not come out clearly on the take-back scheme and end-user liability. I'm not sure of whether their products fall under the ban or are outside of the ban. If NEMA had put out the guidelines right from the beginning that if you do A, B, C, D, 
you qualify for exemption, then these questions will not be arising. So there needs to be clarity on these issues. First of all, for any delegated legislation, there's a clear process in the Constitution and the Statutory Instruments Act. It requires that there's adequate public participation, and the public participation must be on that specific legislation. So not on general issues. If you draft it, you share it. And then the public gives its views on that specific legislation. And out of those views, you make adjustments where there is need. Kenyan manufacturers have placed a host of requests to NEMA in light of the ban. For instance, they want the ban to be lifted on products from export processing zone, EPZ factories, saying that it's crippling sales and that the destination countries have their own environmental management policies. EPZ farms say that exports of garments has stalled because packaging is regarded as secondary packaging. The manufacturers say the ban is resulting in huge revenue losses for the country. There's been no bread being packed, no salt being packed, milk, uh, sugar, horticulture has stopped exporting, flowers have stopped exporting, simply because we haven't got clarification from NEMA on how to do this packaging. Under the Act, what you're required to do as a government institution proposing is to undertake a regulatory impact assessment and uh, look at the full effect of the proposal that you're making. And thirdly, it must be tabled in Parliament within seven days. So those procedures had not been followed and we did raise the concern with the Ministry and uh, they were insistent that we have been discussing over the years, but what we've been discussing is waste management. A new document of a ban is a fresh discussion that does require that consultation to avoid the issues we are seeing today. The argument by the manufacturers is one echoed by a host of other think tanks who believe that plastics in general are not really the problem and that the issue is how Kenya manages its waste. The Kenya Association of Manufacturers gave a proposal for a waste management program through the finance bill of 2017. In a sit-down with Environment Cabinet Secretary Judy Wahungu, I asked her whether this was ever considered. Is it more of a waste management issue or is it the, the plastic bags per se? Let me reiterate what I said from the beginning. Polythene bags are petrochemicals that are pollutants that are toxic. It is my duty to address all toxins in the country, be it air pollution, be it lead poisoning, be it uh, petrochemicals. That is what I am addressing.